Church in St. John, New Brunswick, and we welcome those that will join us a little later on our recorded service. What a special morning we have. It is the third Sunday in Lent, but it's also the morning we get to welcome one of the newest members into Christ's family, Teo Fernando James Learman. His mom and dad were married in Trinity a few years back. And it's wonderful to welcome Mateo into this church, as well as his mom and dad and the extended family that are with us this morning. So it's just a wonderful, wonderful service we'll have this morning because we all get to share, because Mateo brings us together for us to revisit our own baptismal vows as we go through the baptism service. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Our opening hymn is 503, I Heard the Voice of Jesus. Okay. 
Exodus, beginning at the 20th chapter, verse 1. Then God spake all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you of the land of Egypt, and out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a, is a Sabbath. To the Lord your God, you shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or your alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male, or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. us 
justly being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who have, who believe, sorry. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our graduate hymn before the gospel is 767 verses 1 and 2, Beneath the Cross of Jesus.
time, offer all that we have for the glory of God. Amen. Please be seated. I thought I'd take a few moments and just remind ourselves of the sacrament of baptism. Baptism then and now. We're home here this morning to welcome Christ's newest member into his family. This morning, Matea, Fernando, James, Learmonth will be baptized and be marked with the sign of the cross. And by this, welcome into Christ's church and marked forever as Christ's own. But it's important we take a moment and think about the history of baptism so that we can appreciate the importance in our life today as Christians and the importance for what Deanna and Nicholas are doing for their son Matteo this morning. We know the origins of baptism go well back into the Old Testament, years before Jesus' baptism by John the Baptist. God began with a series of covenants, promises that only he could make, which is a covenant. It's an unequal promise, a promise by someone that can give everything that's required and requires not everything from those that are going to be benefiting from it. God established a covenant with Noah with regard to building the ark. He then had another one with Noah that never again would he cleanse the earth by a flood. He had a covenant with Moses. He promised priority over the people of Israel through that covenant. And he summed up these covenants to us and we find it in Exodus where God promises now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations, you will be my treasured possession. So let's for a moment journey back to 10 BC, before Christ. If one wanted to become a Jew and receive the ancient faith of the Hebrews, they would attend the synagogue. They'd undergo the strictest of interviews of why they desire this change in their life. If they were found worthy, they would go into a year or more of deep instruction on the law and the Jewish customs. Then proceeding from that, they would stand at the shore of the river and they would be totally immersed into the water. And as they come out to be signed by a sign of a cross as God's sheep. Let's go forward to 215 AD. You've heard of this group called the Nazarenes or the Christians. There is considerable risk of joining this group, but you wish to. So you have to get sponsors from this group to speak on your behalf and you have to go and present yourself to the catechist. You begin a three-year process of reading scripture and learning the traditions of Christianity. You're permitted to attend the first part of the weekly celebration, but you have to leave before the Eucharist begins as only those that are fully initiated can be present for the holy mysteries of Christ's body and blood. At the end of the three-year term, you're admitted as a candidate for baptism. Then you begin an intensive period of study and preparation. Then the day arrives. The Thursday before, you bathe. Friday and Saturday you fast. The waters are blessed and they are aligned with the waters of the Jordan or the Red Sea. You renounce 
your former way of life. And three times you confess your faith in the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And then you're anointed a second time with the oil of thanksgiving. And this is where you were declared that you share in the royal priesthood of Jesus Christ, the anointed one. Now let's come up into our century. You're in the 1960s in Canada. You're married. You give birth to a baby boy. You're asked, when's the date for the child's christening? It is by this christening that a child takes on its Christian name. You carefully select the godmother and the godfathers for this child. And then the christening service will begin with two families and close friends gathered around the baptismal font. The minister will say the creed and some prayers. And then there'll be a series of promises made by the godparents and the parents over the infant. And by this, there's a series of responsibilities that are committed between those at the farm and God himself. So we find ourselves here this morning, and we can see that there hasn't been a lot changing in the ritual and the sacrament of baptism from the earliest of days. This morning, Deanna and Nicholas will present Mateo, Fernando, James, Lermo to receive the sacrament of baptism. Mateo has his godmother, Serena, here, and godfathers, Tim and Fernando, here as sponsors. They together will promise for Sia Mateo is nurtured in the faith and the life of the Christian community. They will then promise to raise Mateo in the full stature of Christ. During this part of the service, there are three renunciations. They will renounce Satan, evil powers, and sinful desires. And then they'll have three affirmations. They'll turn to Jesus Christ as their Savior. They'll place the whole trust in his grace and love and promise to obey him as their Lord. We'll pray for Mateo. We'll bless the water. We'll join together in affirming our faith through the creed. And then Mateo will be baptized. And he'll be signed as Christ's own forever. Following which, Mateo will receive the light of Christ, showing that he has passed from darkness to light, taking the light from the Paschal or the Christ candle here on his personal candle. The added beauty for us in bapti as baptized Christians is we get the opportunity provided to us by Mateo this morning to renew our own baptismal vows. And for many of us like Mateo, we probably don't remember that day. We were, most of us probably were infant baptized as I was. When we think back to the early church in the Jewish community, they used water for a number of washing, cleansing, and purifying as part of their ritual referred to as the mikvah, which they still use as part of a process in confession and conversion. So as John the Baptist baptized Jesus back in the day in the River Jordan, we here this morning will baptize Mateo, marking a new life in him, as he is marked as Christ's own today and forevermore. Amen. Now the service will proceed to the font, and I invite the Mateo to bring his family up there with me.
represent Mateo to receive the sacrament of baptism. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is nurtured in the faith and life of the Christian community? I will. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow in the full stature of Christ? I will. With God's help. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of the wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce that. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce that. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce that. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to obey him as your Lord? I do. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support Matteo in his life in Christ? We will. We will. Now let us pray for Matteo, who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver Matteo, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Open Matteo's heart to receive your grace and truth. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Fill Matteo with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. Teach Matteo to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Send Matteo into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring Matteo to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O oh Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come in glory, again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, Almighty God and Father, for the gift of water. You nourish and sustain all living things. Blessed be God forever. We give you thanks that through the water of the Red Sea, you led your people out of slavery to the freedom in the promised land. Blessed be God forever. We give you thanks for sending your son Jesus for us. He was baptized by John in the River Jordan. For us he was anointed as Christ by your own Holy Spirit. For us he suffered the baptism of his own death and resurrection. Sending us free from bondage of sin and death and opening us to the joy and freedom of everlasting life. Blessed be God forever. We give you thanks for your Holy Spirit, who teaches us and leads us in all truth, filling us with his gifts so that he might proclaim the gospel to all nations and serve you as a royal priesthood. Blessed be God forever. We give you thanks for you have called Matteo to new life through the waters of baptism. Now sanctify this water, that your servants who are washed in it may be made one with Christ in his death and resurrection, to be cleansed and delivered from all sin. Anoint them with your Holy Spirit, and bring them to new life in the family of your church, that they may become inheritors of your glorious kingdom. We give you praise and honor and worship through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Blessed are you, our strength and song, and our salvation. Turning the page to 158. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ. He 
He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? And I believe in God the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and the fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And when you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example to the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Mateo, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Not quite sure about that. <laughs> and I sign you with the sign of the cross, and I mark you as Christ's own forever. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by the water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon Matteo, your servant, in forgiveness of sin, and have raised him to the new life of grace. Sustain him, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give him an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Receive the light of Christ to show that you have passed from darkness to light. Together, let your light show shine before others, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection and share with us his eternal priesthood. Let us all welcome Matteo Lito.
Hola. Now on behalf of the parish of Trinity, we present Mateo with his own little Bible, picture story of a lot of the stories that are in the Bible, and we know that mom and dad will uh, share that with Mateo over his next years. And you may not know this, but Nicholas's grandfather was an Anglican priest in Nova Scotia. <laughs> Our service continues on page 191 in your prayer book. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, and he welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you as our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And you can turn around and do one of these or whatever you're comfortable with. Share in the peace. Our offertory hymn is found on the insert in your bulletin, Lift High the Cross.
prayer over our gifts this morning. Gracious God, we know your power to triumph over weakness. May we who ask forgiveness be ready to forgive one another. In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Our service continues. Our service continues on page 198. Eucharistic prayer number three. Eucharistic prayer number three on page 198. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Give us thanks to the Lord our God.
For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Using fraction sentence number three. Creator of all, you gave us golden fields of wheat, whose many grains we have gathered and made into this one bread. So may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. This is the Lord's table, and he invites you to meet him here. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
God of mercy and forgiveness, may we who have shared the sacrament live together in unity and peace in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Glory to God, His power of working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, ever and ever. Closing hymn is six, five, four, verses one, two, five, and six. Where the cross, the crowded wave. Thanks be to God. Amen.